Hey guys, Eva here. If you've been following my channel, then you'll know that last summer I went to Mongolia to do a seven day horse trek all alone in the Mongolian wilderness. Now that journey ended a little bit unexpectedly. You can watch it here. Um, so after I recovered, I decided to rent a car and drive it to the Gobi Desert to continue the adventure. This is a video about getting lost and then being found. It's a video about going nowhere, but actually finding somewhere quite special. It's also about finding beauty in places that aren't conventionally beautiful. But if all that sounds way too romantic for you, then it's also just the story of a girl who made the mistake, perhaps, of renting a tiny little two-wheel drive city car and drove it to the desert. Let the adventure begin. The plan was to drive from Ulaanbaatar, the capital of Mongolia, to stay with a family of camel herders who live in the Gobi Desert. That's a 2,000 km round trip. And of course, it had to start with some unforeseen trouble. So my road trip vlog begins really well here in Mongolia, with my car being stuck in between these two cars. How does this happen? How do people do this? Uh, a couple of local guys tried to help me out, but let's just say that their methods weren't super effective. Luckily, one of the drivers blocking my exit had left a note in her car with her number on it. Problem solved. Yes, hello, San Bano. Yeah, your car is kind of in the way of my car. That, that wasn't actually making that call. I had just made that call a little bit earlier, but this is a dramatic recreation of how you deal with situations like this in Mongolia, apparently. Half an hour later and things were looking up again. And we're out. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> the first stop on my way to the camel herders home in the Gobi was the town of Mandel Gobi, around 300 kilometers away. Okay, the asphalt road has ended and now I've just entered a dirt track. The next 70 kilometers, it's this. In a city car. <laughs> Average speed, 20 kilometers an hour. Average comfort, low. Average traffic situation, cattle. All right, first day of driving done. It's around 7 p.m. <laughs> and uh, I'm kind of hungry. And there's this slightly odd looking town here. Let's find a place to eat. I'll show you what it looks like. Mongolia is huge, half the size of India, but has a tiny population of just 3 million people, half of whom live in the capital. The other half live either nomadically or in small remote towns like this one. Do you have booze? Mm -hmm. Booze? Mm -hmm. Um... Well, only meat. Unduk <laughs> kimchi. Okay. Unduk kimchi. Unduk kimchi. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I mean, honestly, this looks pretty good. It's like sizzling, fresh. I'm happy. Let's try. Kimchi. That's all I understood. And obviously meat, because this restaurant is called Seven Meats. Mmm. That is good. Yeah, it's really, really meaty. And now, to find a place to sleep. I am pretty sure I'll end up in the car. <laughs> the first of its kind challenge for me, because I had never before in my life found myself in a rather odd Mongolian town in the middle of nowhere and tried to find a place where I can park my car and sleep because there are no hotels here. This place does not exactly inspire trust, let me put it that way. I was wrong, there is a hotel here, but it's shut. <laughs> 
All the windows are completely dark, the door is locked. So I guess I'll just use the hotel's parking lot for its appropriate function. And I'll park up here and I'll sleep here. Let's do that, shall we? <laughs> Trust me when I say that any vaguely flat surface can become a perfectly acceptable bed for one night. I was starting the day by driving 200 kilometers south to a place called the White Stupa. Ready? Let's go! True story, I have no clue where I am right now, but it looks like this is the definition of the middle of nowhere. Being here reminded me of a poem by T.S. Eliot, that really famous poet. It goes something like this. The eyes are not here. There are no eyes here. In this valley of dying stars, in this hollow valley, this broken jaw of our lost kingdoms. In this last of meeting places, we grope together and avoid speech. in a sandstorm, but I really want to see this place, so... Oh my god, so we should go! Let's go! Wow, I guess I was really determined to meet that camel herding family in the Gobi Desert, huh? Amazing rock formation of these. <laughs> An amazing rock formation. <sighs> it's the next morning. There's less wind. There's no rain. No sandstorms. Look at these colors. Completely out of this world. It's like Mars. It's like a different planet. It's just astonishingly beautiful. Next up, 200 kilometers west to my next destination. So guys, listen, this place, just a few hours south towards the Gobi. Whoa, <laughs> that was pretty intense. This place is called the Flaming Cliffs. And why is it called the Flaming Cliffs? Well, because the cliffs seem to come alight when the sunlight hits them. Next was the last stretch of the journey, just over 300 kilometers to a settlement in the Gobi Desert. That was meant to be my final destination, where I would stay with my fabled camel herding family. Got lost three times. I drove to like this mountain range <laughs> instead of the desert. I had to ask in like three separate yurt camps where the hell I am. And luckily, luckily, the peop there were people there and they explained to me in Mongolian, which I don't understand, by the way, how to get to the dunes. 
so they drew me little maps they showed me symbols and stuff like that and I think finally finally I know how to get there Okay, I've just arrived. This is Zorigo. Yeah. <laughs> and I've arrived at his camel herding camp yeah. here right next to the Hongoren Els. Hongoren Els. Els sand dunes. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a really long journey on dirt tracks across sand and mountain. And I'm just really keen to whew, stretch my legs, see my gear, <laughs> see what this place is like. beautiful is this? Wow! Oh, thank you! By the way, in Mongolia you always, as a guest, enter on the left side, <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, what's this? Yes, tabak. Oh, tabak! No, it's not right. Oh, wow! <laughs> Amazing! Oh. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I've never done this before. <laughs> <Whoa. Yeah>. oh. <laughs> nice. Wow, that is strong. It's kind of minty. More? Yeah. I don't know if I can handle more. <laughs> uh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh wow! <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Gosh, this stuff is making my eyes water. <laughs> and this is milk, which is, you know, something that guests are typically welcomed with here in Mongolia. Wow, fresh. Is it cow? Cow. Oh. Ah. Thank you. Wow. Hmm. Sorry, good just took my camera. <laughs> there's amazing snacks, there's fresh cow's milk here, and I'm just wow, this is like the perfect welcome. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you, Baila. <laughs> Many nomadic families in Mongolia live in yurts like this one. Locally, they're known as Gurs. They may look simple on the outside, but that changes the moment you step inside. This is where I'm going to be spending the night. This is a traditional nomadic camp belonging to a camel herder. We're going to go and check out some of the sand dunes over there tomorrow morning, but for now, I just want to spend some time with the family. So today, since we are in the middle of the Mongolian countryside and it's a little bit cold, we decided to make a traditional dish called khorkhor. Yeah. <laughs> Which should keep us nice and warm, and it's a lot of meat like this. <laughs> I'm gonna be cooking this for the next few hours. The hot hog is known as the king of Mongolian cuisine. Yes, it does have some veggies in it, but mostly it's really about the meat, which is cooked with hot stones for several hours until it's tender and juicy. Mind you, this was all filmed before I went vegetarian. This is erak, which is horse milk, yeah. mare's milk. Apparently it's it's not entirely sober. <laughs> Let's have a little bit. Oh, wow. Mmm, it's good. That's great. It's sparkling, cool, and I feel like after a whole cup, your stomach might be <sighs> like new. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
So this is the famous horog. It's basically a pile of really nice juicy fresh meat with some vegetables scattered around it and this was cooked over hot stones for about three hours. Super traditional Mongolian dish. <laughs> Bella. <laughs> by the way it's pretty basic but it'll do after all we are in the middle of the Gobi can't have too high expectations after all that driving I didn't just go to sleep I pretty much crashed besides Zorigu told me that we had to be up really early the following morning. Zorigu and I are about to go on a camel ride. Of course, that's why I'm here. <laughs> the camels are already waiting. Good morning. Good morning. Here they are. <laughs> Pretty big creatures. Hello, good morning. How are you? <laughs> Zorigu gets up before sunrise every day to drive his herd of camels to a nearby oasis. This is his work, his life, out here in a remote corner of a very remote country. The dunes where Zorigu lives and works are often called the singing sands because of a haunting, whistling sound that rises over them on windy days as the sands shift and move about. I like to think that this vlog is also partly the story of Zorigu, king of the singing sands. And that's my solo road trip to the Gobi. Remember, even if you feel that you are going to the middle of nowhere, that middle of nowhere could very well be the center of everywhere for someone. It could be their home, their everything. They're everywhere. If you haven't yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button right there. And I'll see you in the next vlog. Mwah.